O oh, Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth and everything beyond, thank you for this great day that we're having. At no other time will we all be together, doing the same thing, standing in the same place, ever again in our lives. That's a sign to me that there is a creator. Thank you for this day and this opportunity and that we bring people into our office here, tribal members, we can start some healing on the reservations. Thank the people at the patent office, the leaders, and the, they understand the economics that's going to happen through this program. Hopefully we can pray for the people that they come and understand what this is really about. Bless our leaders, the keepers of these offices, and their families, where they do good work. It's amazing the economics that come out of this. Again, I'd say amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brad. Brad, uh, again, in December, got a notice his first allowance on his uh, hat. Congratulations, and he has several more pending, I understand, as well. Um, I often say that things happen around here when David Campos, our Secretary Secretary Director, sends an email. In this case, he convened a meeting. I think it was about a year and a half ago we first started talking about this relationship with the Native American Intellectual Property Enterprise Council, and it's kind of like that song at last. If I were President Obama, I probably would try to sing. <laughs> Instead, I will introduce the Undersecretary of Commerce for Intellectual Property and the Director of the United States Patent and Trademark Office, David Campos. All right, at last. <laughs> This really is a culmination of a lot of hard work by folks on the USPTO team and folks from the NIPEC team. I actually am going to offer some formal remarks tonight because I want to make sure to um, get some stuff just right here. Uh, first of all, thanks everyone for joining us here at the USPTO this evening. Uh, our sincere thanks, my sincere thanks on behalf of the whole agency to, uh, first of all, Richard Malsby and his office, the Office of uh, Innovation Development, for putting together this new program. So I want to also extend very warm welcome to Dave Petit and his colleagues from the Native American Intellectual Property Enterprise Council, NAPAC, right? Who've come all the way from Georgia, I think in Dave's case, to be here with us tonight, my sincere thanks to all of you as well for the work that you've done, Dave and team at NAPEC, uh, to make this collaboration between our two organizations uh, a reality after quite a bit of work over quite a period of time. You know, at the heart of the new patent reform legislation that was signed by our president a few months ago uh, is a guiding vision it's indeed, it's an abiding faith that diversity is this country's greatest strength, right? Diversity in thought is what allowed our country's great experiment in democracy to prevail. Diversity in ingenuity is what has led our country to countless technological breakthroughs. And diversity in vision is what continues to be the bedrock of the economic future for all Americans, for an America that is, as the President said recently, built to last. And it's only by fully harnessing the immense creative power of that very diversity that we can build a stronger, more sustainable economy that benefits every member of our vibrant economy. Now, the Memorandum of Understanding recently signed between NAPEC and the USPTO is a perfect example of that vision put simply into action by working together to research and identify the IP educational needs of specific Native American communities and to provide that education in whatever way works the best. Our partnership will help to develop Native American inventors and for them the tools that they need to expand 
and profit from their patent and trademark filings. Our partnership will help provide a unique point of access to the USPTO by establishing and creating a new office, right? New office within these very walls and this very building to give Native Americans direct access and a direct voice in advocating for how intellectual property policies can impact tribal communities and tribal interests. And it will help create educational and outreach programs that won't just serve, as important as it is, they won't, won't just serve our Native American communities, but can be a model template, right, for how we connect with and serve the needs and interests of other communities of all backgrounds and all stripes here at the USPTO. But perhaps most importantly of all, this is a unique opportunity between USPTO and NAPAC to work to cultivate an entirely new generation, right? a new generation of inventors like Dave, like Brad, who can continue to inspire their communities, our national communities, our national um, Native American community with the power of innovation and entrepreneurship. David himself is no stranger to invention, in addition to being the founder, chair, and CEO of NAPEC, and the founder of the North American Inventors Association. He is himself a highly recognized inventor in the worldwide energy and communications community with over 40 issued U.S. patents, big customer of our agency to his name, including the essential wireless uh, mesh patent portfolio, right? Dave's inventions are indeed being used in many industries, including uh, smart grid industry, soil management, appliances, um, industrial plant monitoring, building automation, medical asset management, to name a few. His inventions cover the architecture of networks, communities, as well as um, the application of specific technologies that create a number of ongoing business opportunities that he's involved in or has been um, selling. So Dave's unique genius and the technology that it spawned extends the internet to millions of remote actuators and sensors, indeed as national heritage that we all enjoy. I'd like to thank David for his dedication to developing new tools and technologies to address the toughest challenges that confront this planet. And as the director of the United States Patent and Trademark Office, I'd also like to sincerely thank Dave and the entire NAPEC team for working with us here at USPTO to build a new model of community engagement, new conduit for outreach, and new era for the world's 21st century patent and trademark system. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in introducing Mr. David Padilla. And I want to thank everyone for joining us here this evening. And I want to particularly thank the staff and the support we've been getting from NAPAC, Kim Ribbons, Kim, you take a bow. Thank you. Bambi, take a bow. We've got other people. Uh, Ann been helping us. Uh, Don Chapman. Uh, the, the, just the, the, the list goes on and on and on and on. But the contributions that are being made by the folks in this room are going to have not only now but future impact going forward that's going to help cultivate create better, not only a better life, but create a better way of living for a lot of folks that today have never ever imagined. So as, as an example, as you're looking at a fine example right here. I mean, I'm just a, a guy that started a little business in my garage. And uh, I tell people, you want to see a poster child for the U.S. Patent Office and what it does? You look at me. Because they have done their job, and I've done mine as an inventor. Not only did I create things, but I actually built product and sold product and went through the whole phase from, from the spark from the idea to actually going in production and selling the product. So, you know, 
it's a long road, it's a tough road, but it's a very compelling and rewarding as well because now it gives me the time and it gives me the skills that few people come across to understand what the true value is of intellectual capital and how to use it and how to galvanize it so it becomes a, a part of living and it becomes a, a way of life. And our goal and our objective is to help instill that not only in the tribal people today, but also in the young kids and the minds of them coming up in the future. To sustain a culture, to create an avenue that will provide a way of life for not, for not only now, but in the future. And so, our work is just starting. <laughs> We've got a long ways to go, and we really would appreciate everyone's help any way we can get it. And uh, we don't have all the answers, and we don't have all the... Uh, the knowledge, but we certainly have a, a wealth of resources as we have in this room to help us get and achieve what we need to do. And I especially want to thank Richard Mosby for his help and help us starting this that we have today. So Richard, I want to thank you.